We're going to do another example where we're asked to find the local maximum and minimum points using the first derivative test. So notice we've been given a function g of x, which is a third degree polynomial. To find the local maximum and local minimum points, our first step is to identify critical points. Remember, critical points are points on g of x where g prime of x is undefined or g prime of x is 0. So our first step, of course, needs to be find g prime. So g prime of x, 1 third x to the third. When we drop down the 3, we'll take 1 third times 3 and get 1. And then we'll have x raised to the 3 minus 1, which is 2. So the derivative of 1 third x to the third is 1x squared. Or you could just write x squared minus derivative of 3x squared, we drop down the 2 out front, we get 6x, plus derivative of 9x is just 9. Now we need to identify any places where g prime of x is undefined. Since g prime of x is a second degree polynomial, a quadratic function, it is never undefined. It's always defined for all x's. All real numbers can be plugged into g prime of x. Next, we need to identify points where g prime of x is equal to 0. So these will be places on the graph of g of x where g of x flattens for an instant. So we're going to set g prime of x equal to 0. So 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. Again, um, it is up to you how you'd like to go about solving this particular equation. This equation could be factored or it's okay for you to quad use the quadratic formula. I'll go ahead and show both methods. Just It's totally up to you as long as you show your work. So over here, if we factor the equation, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is the same as x minus 3 times x minus 3 using the zero product property. When you have two things multiplied together that equal zero, then one or both of them must equal zero. So we set each factor to zero. x minus 3 is zero and we get the answer x equals 3, but we get that answer twice. That's called a double root. There's only one x value that makes g prime equal 0. It's x equals 3. But we call it a double root because as you see here, it's that answer that occurred twice. So the solution, the one solution, the one critical point is x equals 3. All right, if you had solved that using the quadratic formula, which is also perfectly acceptable, remember it's x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Plug in our coefficients, so it's 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 4 times 1 times 9 all over 2 times 1. And if you type that 36 minus 4 times 1 times 9 and, and calculate that out, you'll get 0. So it's 6 plus or minus square root of 0 over 2. So your two answers here are 6 plus 0 over 2 and 6 minus 0 over 2. Adding or subtracting 0 has no change on the number. So it's 6 over 2, which is 3. And again, 6 over 2 equals 3. Again, we see that double root, one critical point at x equals 3. All right, next, it's a good habit for you to get in, and I would expect you guys to take a moment here to write a little sentence explaining what you now know. We know the function g of x flattens for an instant at the critical point x equals 3, and this is the only critical point, so it is the only place where g of x flattens for an instant. All right, we've been asked to find local maximum and local minimum. We know all local max and min must occur at critical points, so our only potential max or min occurs at x equals 3. Now, to identify if x equals 3 is actually a max or a min or neither, we're going to draw our real number line covering the entire domain of g of x. I put our critical point x equals 3 on the number line. I make a couple notes to myself there. At x equals 3, g prime of 3 is 0, so g of x is flat. That's the only place where g of x will flatten. 
So we now need to test what's happening to g of x over here on the left side of x equals 3. What's happening to g of x over here on the right side of x equals 3? And to understand that behavior, we're going to pick an x value down here. For example, on the left side, I'm going to pick x equals 0, but it doesn't matter. You can pick any x you like on this interval. I usually pick one that's easy to work with, like x equals 0. And I'm going to plug that into g prime. So our g prime is x squared minus 6x plus 9. So g prime of 0 is 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 9. So g prime of 0 is 9. Now, what did I get from that? g prime at x equals 0 is 9. I don't particularly care that it's the number 9. What I care about is that g prime is positive. And any x value you pick on this interval below x equals 3, if you plug it in the derivative, you will find g prime is positive. And that tells me g is increasing. So on the left side of x equals 3, g is increasing. Then at x equals 3, g of x is flat for an instant. So if we imagine what that must look like, g of x must be going up, 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 up. But by the time it gets to 3, it's flat. So it looks like this. So it looks like it could potentially be a maximum, but it would only be a maximum if it now starts to decrease after x equals 3. If it were to continue increasing after x equals 3, it wouldn't be a maximum. So we have to test on the right side of x equals 3 to see the behavior. So again, we're going to pick any value on the right side of x equals 3. I'm going to pick x equals 4. We're going to take g prime and evaluate it at x equals 4. Again, doesn't matter what x value. Plug whatever x value in that interval you like. So I'm plugging in 4 to my g prime function. It's just 1. Again, I don't care particularly that it is equal to the value 1. What I care about is that it is positive. g prime is positive. And that is true for any x value over here on the right side of x equals 3. So since g prime is positive on the right side of x equals 3, we know g of x is increasing on the right side of x equals 3. So imagining now, on the left side, g of x is increasing. And then at x equals 3, g of x flattens. And then on the right side of x equals 3, g of x continues increasing. So it must look like this. Notice x equals 3 is not a max, it's not the highest in its local region, and it's not a min, it's not the lowest in its local region. x equals 3 is neither a max nor a min. So what we've shown here really is that g of x has no local max or min. If it did, then we would have found critical points at those points and been able to test them and demonstrate that they were max or min. But the only critical point was x equals 3. When we tested it, it turns out not to be a max or min. Let's try example 3. Again, in example 3, we're given a nice third degree polynomial. We're asked to identify local max and min. So hopefully at this point, you're kind of getting used to the procedure. Our first step is to find our critical points, places where h prime of x is 0, or h prime of x is undefined. So I first need to identify the function h prime of x, which in this case, we're going to drop down that 3 and get 3x squared. We're going to take 2 times 7.5. We get 15, so it's minus 15x. And the derivative of 33x is 33. I again have a second degree polynomial. So h prime of x is never undefined. Second degree polynomials are defined for all real numbers. So we can focus our attention on identifying when is h prime of x equal to 0. This time, to solve this equation, 
it is not factorable. So you do not have that option available to you. So instead, we are going to have to resort to solving with the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Plugging it in here, we get x equals 15 plus or minus square root of 15 squared minus 4 times 3 times 33 all over 2 times 3. I'm going to calculate the value underneath the radical. That's the discriminant. I'm going to calculate 15 squared minus 4 times 3 times 33. And you see that you get negative 171. And I could actually just stop right here. Remember, when your discriminant is negative, that means that your quadratic function does not have real roots. h prime of x equals 0 has no real solutions because you can't take the square root of a negative. These x values are not real numbers. So back when you were taking algebra, you would learn then that this quadratic function, h prime of x, since it's open up and it has no real solutions, we know that it, it is hovering above the x-axis like this. It never has any x-intercepts. So we, though, are interested in h of x and what we know about h of x. We said we need to find critical points of h of x. So we found its derivative, set it to 0, and said, well, h prime of x doesn't equal 0. So our conclusion about critical points is that h of x does not have any critical points. That's all very technical. I want to know what does that actually tell me about the graph of h of x? Well, let's think about what it means to be a critical point. To say that it doesn't have any critical points where the derivative is 0. If the derivative were 0, it would mean h of x flattens for an instant, but it doesn't have any points like that. So to say that it doesn't have any critical points, it means h of x never flattens for an instant. And because it doesn't have any undefined critical points, that would mean that it doesn't have any sharp points. It also doesn't have any points where it's vertical for an instant. From that, I can right now say h of x has no local max or local min. Remember, if it had local max or min, those points would have to be critical points. So we have answered the question here. It said identify local max and min. Because it doesn't have critical points, I can say it has no local max or min. But just going one step further here, what would this tell us about the graph of h of x? If it doesn't have any max or min, it means it doesn't have any turning points. It never changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. It never goes up and comes back down. It never comes down and goes back up. It must be the case that it is always increasing, h of x I'm talking about, h of x always increasing, or h of x always decreasing, because it never is flat for an instant, and it never changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. If you are interested to know quickly which way it is, is it always increasing or always decreasing, you can pick any number, like x equals 0, plug it into the derivative, and see, is h prime positive or is h prime negative? Well, if you plug 0 into the derivative, you're going to get 33 out. That means h prime of 0 is positive. And in fact, it actually means h prime of x is positive for all x values. Because it has no critical points, it has no places where it changes sign. The derivative must always be positive. So h of x is always increasing. And in fact, if you look at a graph of h of x, it roughly looks like this. It does change concavity, which we'll talk about in the next unit, but it is increasing concave down, then increasing concave up, but it never actually flattens for an instant.